Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So again today I'm going to be working on the little glass house. Now I want to try and get it finished so that I can move on to one of the other pieces. So the last thing I sort of want to do is bring in some little pebbles and stones and sort of just embellish the ground of which it sits upon. Um, oh, look at those there in the bottom. They came from one of the other projects. I might stitch one of those in. There's two or three sitting down the side of the needle box. And these were pinned further down from uh, one of our other videos. So I thought maybe I could add one of those. Where is my thread? And then I can get started. So it's really about giving it a ground today. And if I do get, you know, moving along with it or to a point where I think it's just repetitive stitching and it's just finishing it off, I'll, uh, I might start looking at the, the next piece. I don't like to, you know, mix them up in videos so that it doesn't sort of get me all confused. But we might be able to. I wonder if that would work in there. Not really. That tucked in over there. Not really. It sort of looks like just a blob, doesn't it? I don't know if I like that. Sort of like it to be softer and more interesting. I wonder if he could tuck down into there. That's more interesting. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. Just a little softer. So I'm just going to pop a couple stitches in him. I could just pin him and catch him later, but for all of a few minutes, I'm just going to stitch him down. And then from that point, I might sort of start working towards the other side. And here comes Casper. Good morning, Casper. How are you? Okay, for those of you who don't know, Casper's my cream, or actually technically I think they call him a blue, a blue Burmese, so, but he's cream in colour and he's got this undertone of blue across the top of his head and his back, well, it's very subtle, but he's cream to look at, if you didn't know otherwise you'd just call him a cream coloured cat, and his brother from another mother is fudge and he is a brown so he's got that caramel color with the chocolatey dark face hey casper he's really smoochy i don't know what's going on been feeling a bit off the last day i've got a staff member that's going through a tough time a bit of a relationship breakdown and uh, then I heard last night that mum is not real good. So I just feel a little bit off thinking about all of that and I was lying on the bed having a bit of a, a nana nap and um, Casper got really clingy. Usually he just walks in, looks at me and moves on, you know, typical cat. But yesterday I got all this smooching and I was lying there thinking, wow, a bit of love. I'm just going to actually bring him up because a few people go, we haven't seen Casper for a while. So I'm just grabbing him and I shall bring him to the camera. I'm getting very sidetracked. Hey, Casper. So yeah, Casper gave me a lot of loving. So there's Casper's little head. Hey, Casper, let me zoom out a little bit. Whoop. That's it. There's a, there's a Caspi. Hey. Yeah, he's a good boy. So Casper gave me a lot of loving yesterday. So it's funny, isn't it? Usually he comes and goes like the wind. He he will check on me and then off he's gone. You know, can't spend time, got to go. Got places to be like his bed. But yesterday he was real clingy, climbed up onto my shoulder, put his paws up on my 
sort of the nape of my neck and just sort of drifted off to sleep. So I don't know if he knew I was a little bit flat or what, but yeah, they're pretty, pretty smart, aren't they, these animals? So let's get my little stones out. Well, brown beads. And I'm just going to start... I might just pop a few this side first. Maybe the other side I used to put a bit of greenery in. Don't know. At the end of the day, there's no rules to this. You just stitch it down. Anyone who looks at your work is not going to know the deliberations that went into it and the, the um, turmoil. <laughs> Sometimes it is a bit like that. You sort of, there's one piece that I've got a bit of turmoil on, this one here, but just not, not sold on it yet. I think other pieces are getting more time invested into them. And that one is sort of showing that it's just a quick little stitch, but that's not a problem really. You know, at the end of the day, these pieces evolve and it is what it is. I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I think that's too big. That looks like a blooming boulder. I think we'll skip you. I might bring in some of these. I've sort of only had a few of those little brown beads. It's an, an old necklace. And there's not a lot there. It should get me through the project, but... Even they're too big. I know they have a little sister. I'm sure there's a little. Even those little green ones won't hurt. So I'm sort of, well, I'm not making them last, but I sort of am a little. Is that needle going to handle this little stuff? it won't okay awesome we're away so it's just about for me just putting in some little random beads just to sort of build on the fact that there's a few pebbles remember this is very rocky country here our garden bed further down our vegetable patch there were rocks being pulled out as it was being turned over I was actually um, up at my parents' farm visiting Dad and he was giving me the tour of the farm. always get a bit of a tour of what's going on. And um, we come to the one section behind the shed and here's all of the rocks from years of just farmers ploughing and just flicking them up the ridge a little bit. Oops, nearly upended all the beads. So I sort of giggled to myself. So there you go. There's those rocks. I don't know where I'm going with these beads, but I've sort of scalloped down a little bit. So I wonder what I can put in that little gap closer to. Maybe some foliage. Something growing. Just a hint. It's getting caught on everything. Come on. That's it. Jump over here a little bit. Oh, there's been some great vegetable patches. Oh, the hours of work. Getting all those veggies sorted. Some really good. Oh, who was I watching the other day? Um, uh, yes, actually this morning, to be honest. Um, oh, what's her channel called? I didn't bring my phone in. I think it's still out on the kitchen counter. Um, oh, goodness me. I'll link it below because, oh, she's only got a few subscribers and, um, she just popped up on my feed and she's doing a pale white um, pale greens and a pop of pale purple. It is so pretty. 
It's really inspiring. And I think she's only got 300 odd subscribers, so she must be fairly new. I have not had a chance to sort of explore her channel and go looking to see, you know, what her backstory is. But she's a talented girl. She doesn't think so, but she is. When you see her work, you'll be like, mm-hmm. She's been sitting out there in her craft room and she's popped up on the radar. And beautiful, beautiful. I'd love to do a page in my journal of stitchery. So I've got a few spare pages using that color palette and exploring it because I'm a bit of a fan of that fresh, fresh green. It's so pretty. You'll know what I mean when you see it. Let me write that down to pop the, I'll just write new lady and um, You'll see the link below. She's done her garden fence and she's just working on a glass house and pretty, pretty, pretty. Oh, I think that's probably enough beads there. I need to scatter them out a bit. They're getting a bit too clustered, which makes them appear bigger than what I actually really want them to be. So a little bit more sparse is what we need you can have a pile of rocks but you know got to be a bit careful might leave it at that and then we might find some threads to do some foliage in around them ow all these bead needles are hard on our fingers aren't they not that i'm complaining because I just love it. But starting to get a few wall wounds. It was good to have that break over the weekend too, just to allow my fingers to, you know, settle. So just a few little pebbles there. I just want to explore some additional stitches. Now, what colours have we been using? Okay. So some of that Anne Brooks thread, I don't think any of that is actually left. There's those little beads I was looking for. So we sort of need these pale. These are the colours that lady's using. I should go and grab my phone. How rude. Let's get some threads happening so most of my backgrounds have been French knots or pistol stitch keeping it simple just layering in different colors and tones I sort of don't want too much green in this at the end of the day it's champagne garden so it's all about those goldy brown tones and here comes Casper again my goodness two visits in one morning it's a bit you know odd so let's just get some little French knots. Might zoom in so you can get a little bit more view. Just gonna what a shocking word, just gonna. I'm just going to place some French knots here no other reason um i was going to put in a button too wasn't i one of those old linen buttons so i'm going to jump up and grab them because i did spot that last time on the video right there and it's only up here these three so for consistency we might bring um, one of those in, I think. Once we get a few little something somethings around this base, we'll nestle a button in there, I think. I 
Oh, you could seriously just fiddle with these projects all day, couldn't you? I just, because <laughs> you're just doing little strokes of things here and there. I might just come over this other side and get a few of these little knots over here. Like I'm not thinking too hard about this. I'm just sort of going with the flow. Just uh, building up layers. Might even go rummaging through the lace and see if I can find like a crocheted edge that could be worked into it just to add a little bit more texture. I do love working crocheted edges into my work. Someone has sat there after they've embroidered their doily and crocheted a beautiful pattern around the edge of the doily. So I like grabbing morsels and um, just building it in because there's actually quite interesting shapes in them little scallops and bits and pieces so i'm just looking over that way to my pile of crocheted bits someone was asking me about how i store things i sort of I don't know if I've got a system or not, but I, I must do because it seems to work and I haven't had a big tidy up for probably 12 months. So that sort of tells me that I'm happy with the system. But basically around the perimeter of my room, I've just got containers of all sorts storing all of my textiles. And I group my textiles so that um, that's what caught my eye. I've got a heap of these, so they're not, you know, a lady's made them. They're being mass produced or it's a pattern that everyone was doing in the time and they just have to be hundreds of them in all of the op shops. But I'm sort of looking at this little flower here. So it's a bit of a bonus to have a flower within your doily. So I'm wondering if I can... Yeah, I like that. Just got to find the right spot. Yep, that's good. Just a little peekaboo out there. Um, while I'm thinking, I might grab that button. Where's Casper's tail? Don't want to run over a pussycat star, especially when I'm getting so much loving from the pussycat. Hey, Casper. Here's my, here's my buttons. Now, I picked these up ages ago. Look at that. They were not cheap, let me tell you. So I'm, I'm sparing with them. I sort of nibble away at them. I do have some random ones that I got through my grandmother's box of tricks when I cleaned out her sewing room, but they're a lot smaller, but I did pick up this big sheet oh, ages ago, probably a couple of years ago, probably before they became a bit of a hot item and everyone was chasing them. I just was enthralled with these linen covered buttons, especially once I found that grandma had some in her um, sewing basket. I was like, what are these? And my aunt and my mum, we were cleaning out the house. She'd gone into a nursing home and she still had all her faculties. Don't get me wrong, the girl was sharp. So she was sitting down the road at this nursing home wondering what treasures we were unfolding. So we'd go down and report our findings and discuss it all with her and, you know, have a chat about it and try and find the history of things. And I remember taking these buttons down to her and saying, you know, what are these? So that's sort of where I got onto these little linen buttons. And they weren't even any that she used. They were just in her collection from her mother or her aunts and their mother. So she wasn't real sure. Oh, that knot didn't work too good. 
She wasn't real sure of their history within our family, but they were just, you know, like it is in the stash. So I'm just going to nestle this little guy in here. I think I'll only use the one. Got to stretch our goodies out, don't we? I can't seem to find the hole. Oh, come on. Seriously, how hard it is to sew on a button. Now my knots come through again. Oh, I tell you. Before I go, I will grab my phone off the kitchen counter and I will tell you who I was watching. And then I'll link her channel below and you can go and check it out because her piece, oh, I don't know. It's just, and she's very um, thoughtful in her stitch. You know, she's, she takes her time and you can just see she's working through the stitches in her mind before she, she moves forward. Not like me. I'm just like, oh, I like that. Down it goes. Oh, I like that. Down it goes. Occasionally, oh, I don't like that. Out it goes. <laughs> so this little piece is now just being stitched down. I like how that's just extended the cluster of wildflowers that are growing. So we're connecting these scenes together of these little clusters of something somethings. It's a pretty little doily that. There's heaps in there that we could cut out and use. So sometimes just one little doily. So look at those little scallops. Very interesting. The little triangles could be something. And it's fun too, because we know it's a doily that's been broken down into elements. But when people look at your work, they'd never guess that that's a little piece from somewhere, like a doily. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna secure down those leaves. I had left them loose just in case I wanted to tuck something underneath. So I'm pretty confident that they can be stitched down to now. I'm using a big needle here with a big eye so the thread's just going to fall out so easily. It's not the right needle. It feels a bit like a tapestry needle to be honest. Should be using a milliner's needle. But it's the one that fell out into my hands. So it is what it is. It will work. Okay, that feels that feels good. Nice and secure. And now I might just look. I think I need more embroidery colour in there. Well, you know, not colour. Stitches. Oh, there's the Anne Brooks thread. Okay. And Brooks thread. What I mean by that is I bought a little sewing kit from her probably two years ago now when I first discovered her because she was using all these different fabrics in all her work and I was like, oh, I wonder what that looks like in real life. It's so hard at times to sort of get a feel for the fabrics that different artists use. So I find that if I buy like a little kit where you get morsels of their world you don't have to make the pattern it's just a good way to have a look at the fabrics and sort of learn what Anne would look for when she's gathering her textiles so there was a lot of tweeds and things like that in it and so and in the project this little needle book um was this thread and it's an unusual thread it's it's like cordage 
There was another one on this little card, but I've since used it. So it doesn't go to waste, even though I didn't use the little pack of fabric in making a little book. Um, it um, sort of just gave me a, a, a quick little look into Anne's world. So when you're starting to gather textiles and things like that, you sort of get a bit of a feel for what what others are using and it also gives you some textiles that you just don't find in your local area too because we're in Queensland we get a very a lot of lightweight fabrics in our op shops so to come across some heavier you know yarn um, fabrics it can be a bit tricky because we just don't have the climate for it we don't, we don't get snow here so that's probably a good thing because I'd be buying big jackets and cutting fabric out and I'd have so much fabric I wouldn't know what to do with it all. I do get a lot of lace because we wear a lot of little lacy tops, especially the young ones, the young girls, or little summery lacy edged blouses and things like that. So there's always lace to be found which is very very handy so i've just popped in there just some random little stitches you probably can't see it it's a variegated cotton so that's another bonus is it's changing color as i go so i sort of swished down with those rocks then i've jumped across and now i'm sort of heading up just trying to put a bit of movement into the piece there's a little bit of thread left so i'm just going to keep going until it's all used no use wasting this little morsel you can barely see it because it's got quite pale but it doesn't matter because it is there and when people start looking into your piece the surprises are in all of those little extra stitches that aren't obvious to the eye that's what makes these pieces just so beautiful that's why i reckon if you think you're finished spend another 20 minutes on it just putting down some random stitches and it just really makes a difference okay so there's a little bit of foliage at the base of our little house now this little guy keep looking at it can we get him in? Yep, that's the spot. He's going in. He's been hanging around. He's finding a home. Ooh, I drank my coffee really quickly. I was a little bit hungry when I woke up. So I drank it really quickly and now I'm having that hot, flush of caffeine go through me so if I start talking really fast and you're thinking what's wrong with the girl it's caffeine induced so what I'm going to do with this one I usually would overcast these little pieces because I've got that raw edge but what I'm going to do is place all my stitches right next to the the little flower so that the raw edge is actually up in the air and not stitch down I think it'll help create a bit of softness I think because it's a circle and all I'm seeing is this little circle that's why I keep placing it somewhere and rejecting it because I think it looks quite harsh so I'm gonna keep my stitches really close to the embroidered flower so it won't come undone then. Goodness me, lost my thread. I need to lift that up because I want it to tuck in under that piece. 
Oh, I just want to get to the French garden. I know you're probably all thinking, I think that's the favourite from most people. And I know what I want to do. I've known since the moment it, the words were uttered, I've got the perfect piece or perfect design. And it's one of my own designs. So it'll be really fun to play with one of my sketches from back in the day. But I need to finish this one. And then I can have a play with the one that transitions through the colours. Because um, I've had some fabrics arrive that I think are going to really give that piece a lift. I think I mentioned them a couple videos ago that I found some, uh, what's the word, is it ombre? Where it drifts through colour. I found some chiffon online a yard of chiffon for like oh i think it was 12 dollars or something really reasonable and i think i bought four different color combinations and i thought that is going to last me forever and it was packaged so tightly in like a little package and i thought oh gee i haven't got much fabric and as soon as i undid it and the air got in Oh, bloom and hang, I've got a mess. There's fabric everywhere here. I'll show you. But it's like drifts through beautiful colours. So I think that's what that piece needs. Just needs to have some morsels of softness. There we go. Happy with that. Now, might just pop a couple more stitches in. Where's that dark green? Here it is. Just feel like I need another layer of thread. Oh, I still have this piece. No. Here's some tatting. That comes from the French. Better not use it. Try and keep my projects, you know. The elements try and keep them to the project not drift them because you know what will happen I'll be chasing I'll be chasing um, chasing a piece and I'll be like oh where is it I just need one more bit and it'll be stitched onto one of these other ones so I'm just popping a few extra little knots in under these beads just to help build that shadow yeah that's better Just sneak over to here and I might just do no I won't do a stitch like that I sort of need it at the rear if I'm gonna put a, a straight stitch in I need to get it from behind all of this it should have probably gone in first I might do a little pistol stitch That's better. He's blocking the doorway a little bit, but that's okay. It's a little random seed heads. Gonna pull that chill back a bit. I feel like I need something over on this corner. That's better. Oop. Running out of thread. One, two. Oh, 
Oh, come on. Sneak one more out would be good. Yeah, that's that's better. Yep. Might just pop a couple little beads over on that side. I think that'll just finish it off. Won't look like it's just a couple little stitches. I sort of want to I'm sort of trying to give the impression there's a bit of a rise there as well. So that's why it's not just a straight line. It's sort of drifting down. So let's get some thread again. Some just normal old cotton. So uh, like I said, it's very rocky country, this, this little garden. The glass houses are really simple, great little little pieces for your project. If you're a bit concerned about proceeding because you're doing something that you're not sure of, the little glass house is pretty good. Give it a go. Don't be don't be too worried about it. I think that's too big. Need one of these big guys. And then I might pop in some of those, the ones I was looking for before. Just to pop a bit of pearl in. Maybe you start putting a bit of sparkle in, like pearl. I just think it makes your piece just pop. It looks a little bit more... I don't know, thought out. I think it's the light starts bouncing around your piece, otherwise it can look quite flat. Depends what you like to. You mightn't, you mightn't like sparkle in your garden, so you won't sort of tend towards sequins and beads. I like it because it just adds a whole new dimension to it. And it's sort of nearly a little routine I go through. Your background, your little embroidery stitches, and then finish off with some beads. And I just find my piece, I don't know, it just looks complete. We're getting a rainy day here today. So you're watching this video Thursday. And I'm filming it Wednesday. So today, my day, you'd be watching the book reviews, the two books from Jennifer. So I hope you enjoy that. <clears throat> and it's sort of been muggy and hot. And now it feels like we're getting a bit of a rainy day today, which will be lovely. Make a change from the heat. And finally, we have nothing on this week. It's now we've got to Wednesday. And my husband last night said, so what's next? And I looked at my phone. I'm like, nothing. Our next appointment is Monday. It's the last of the suppliers from the Australian wholesalers showing us what we can order for our Christmas stock for our business. So, yeah, Monday's the last last one of those. Then I'll be able to finish the last order for the season of 2023 and put together the big product manual so the staff know what to expect in the way of stock. So then they can start arranging their stores and planning displays and, yeah, they know what's coming. So... That means we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday free. Nothing. Nothing planned. Heaven forbid, what would we do? I'm going to stitch. I feel like I haven't had my stitching, stitching medicine. 
due to a house full of people. I just haven't had the block time. I'm just scooting over to this flower that I stitched down. I sort of feel like I could maybe embellish that a little with some of these beads. Yeah, I feel like I haven't had the hours I like to put in. So I stitch every day. At the moment, it's just on these projects, but um, I'm always stitching something. I was watching Rachel's videos. She started on Easter and I thought, oh, should I do some Easter? And I thought, no, I just, just want to stitch. Stitch, stitch, stitch. Because it takes so long. Like, you really... You chew the hours up doing this type of work. Where's Casper? No, Casper's left me. He's He's had enough. I feel better today anyway, so he must be like, yep, she's all good. So I've just popped a few little pearls in there. Just a little something. I think that's pretty much it. I feel like I've got some interest around the little house. I was thinking of doing a, a garden rake or something, wasn't I? might have a little play with that next and that will finish it I think whether I can pull it off because it's such a tiny tiny image I had thought it'd be out here but I'm thinking see that's the same color as the shed I think it wouldn't be picked up by the eye so I might just see if there's another color I do that I don't think you'd know that it was a rake see what I mean it just sort of becomes part of it let's have a look. another look this guy might do it a rake or a shovel I might just use two threads if it doesn't look right I can always grab another thread but it can't be too big it can't be too thick Having said that, I was chatting to someone about proportion and how it's really hard to keep that when your piece is not too true size. It's, and I said, we pretty much give up on proportion. If you want to rake, it could be as big or as small as you like. There are just no rules. Okay. <clears throat> Just thinking about the size. It needs to lean on the building. Yeah, that'll work. Thinking it'll be a digging fork. I can hear the rain. It's been so dry here. <clears throat> so it's going to be really welcome. Our lawn has just got so brown. Summer has hit with a vengeance. Last night I had the door open, the sliding glass door open to my bedroom. And there was a real cool little breeze and I just sort of felt like, I don't know, the first time you think, oh, gee, there's a change in the season. That's sort of how I felt as I was climbing into bed. I thought, oh, I feel that little breeze. That's, oh, that's a crooked leg on a rake. Goodness me. <clears throat> there's a plant, a stitch of a plant in the way. <clears throat> There we go. It's ever so small. It's barely visible. But it will 
do. It'll be a nice little, little detail. Okay, there we go. Happy with that. Just some little morsels around it. That flower there looks like a tree now. It's um, really, really grown. <clears throat> Not real happy with that little flower, that beaded flower. I think I need to put a few little stitches around him. <clears throat> Excuse me. To hold the petals out. They're curling into the center because they're sitting on a chunky crocheted piece. Excuse me. <clears throat> Goodness. So I'm thinking I need to pop a few stitches in a few key spots just to hold the petals out. And they're sort of competing with a lumpy background of the crocheted doily that I put down. That's better. This little guy here is sitting right up against a bump as well. So I'll see if I can get more of a round. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a rainy day, a couple of movies, and some stitching. And that rain really looks like it has set in out there. I think there might be an opportunity for a nothing day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, that means I need to film three or four videos in a row to give me lots of homework to do. Gee, that'll be hard, won't it? What fun that sounds like. The house is quiet. Hubby's still sleeping. Puppies and pussycats have all been fed. So, I'm thinking I can be in my element. <clears throat> yeah, that's better. It's just pinning the petals out a little bit. There we go. One more. Just a couple little stitches. And then I'm going to tidy up my space and I'm gonna, gonna, it's a shocking word. <clears throat> I'm going to, that's better. Probably could have done with one more petal there. It's like a bit of a gap. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. I wonder if I on those green beads and we do another petal maybe that'll make me a bit happier about that flower where were they I don't know now we're off on a tangent we're going to put together another petal for that beaded flower two Three, four, five. I think I need more than that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, that's what it needed. It just wasn't quite right. And I know it's not odd numbers but I know the rule is you know rules of three but sometimes three or five an odd number is needed it really comes down to how it looks yeah just 
pad the space of it. And I'll put a few stitches in him as well, just to hold to that shape. Lovely. Oh, pleased about that. That little flower's been bugging me for a few weeks. I think I did that on the very first week. Okay. There we go. Done. Little flower fixed. Little greenhouse done. Some little morsels around, just some little bits and pieces. And an itty bitty rake that no one will probably ever notice is even there. But that's all good. It'll be good because in the future I'll pick this piece up for a little look and I'll spot that rake and I will remember when I put it in and thought, gee, it's barely there. Was that worth the effort? <laughs> it was. Alrighty, I think that's it. Time to tidy up the space and then I'm going to start the next project, the one that drifts through the colours. And I'm going to show you some fabric that I've had arrive that I think will just take that piece to the next level. And I will link in the description below the video that I was watching that, um, oh, I wish I could remember the details. I will uh, find that out and it'll be in the description. Go check her out. She's um, a very talented girl. All right, everyone, look after yourselves. Have a lovely day. And I'll see you next Hi time. Guys, I'm back. I went to get my phone to find out exactly the name of the video I was watching. And um, I just saw popped up on my screen yet to watch was um, uh, Create uh, create and Craft with Christine. Oh my goodness. If you haven't checked out what she's up to with the greenhouse, uh, the glass house, beautiful absolutely beautiful she's got this gorgeous piece of fabric and she's stitching birds and butterflies inside this glass house so go check it out um now let me go to my history and find this lady's piece here she is Hello, i just turn that volume off elizabeth robinson look at that now the piece is um, look at the colours. See that there? Let me turn the volume down. Oop. Turn the volume down. Look at that. Gorgeous, Elizabeth. Gorgeous. I don't know if you watch my channel at all, but everyone, go and check her out. Look at that fence. Look at her vegetables. And then she's done a trellis with the um, some beans on it. Beautiful. That that wash of purple there with that green, oh, stunning, 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 stunning. So I'll link Elizabeth's channel below. It's under her own name. And that one there is episode five. So that's the episode I'll link, but you could probably catch up real quick if you found, you know, the additional episodes. So yeah, brilliant. That is inspiring. All right. I will leave you in peace now and um, enjoy your day, guys. Bye for now.